I am unashamed. What about you? Right, well, you know, I've turned into Mr. Fix It, which I've said many times. I'm good at destruction, <laughs> not fixing. I don't think you've really turned into Mr. Fix It because you already said you're in cable. That you're, you're trying to turn into Mr. Well, Fix I'll tell you this. The dishwasher is still sitting there with cinder blocks <laughs> under it. Nobody has said a word now. We've gotten over how it looked. Oh, boy. And so, so, so it does do its function. It functions. I'm proud of it. That's all it counts. I mean, this is MacGyver was the number one show for a while That's for right. a reason. That's right. And so now we go in there, you know, I take a shower and I start hearing the commode go bloop, 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 which is a bad sign. It's never good. So I thought, well, you really man, never want go. your commode to be making any noise other than the flush. No, flesh. especially from 20 yards away. Exactly. And so I tell Missy, I'm like, call the plumber. And she's like, oh. I said, well, look, let me. Let me. Uh, <laughs> which, which that, I understand. If you're getting let me that take reaction, a whack at it. <laughs> and you're getting that reaction. I agree. I mean, it should be. I tell Lisa that. She's, I hear beep, 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 beep. No, I mean, she, she went, oh. <laughs> so I said, well, let me take a take a gander. And she, I hesitated. She didn't. I thought. Yep. She, she, see, <laughs> Missy wants me to be. Mr. Fix she it. thinks she's driving you to that. I'm not. She's Chase, like you part are, of the... You are fulfilling the strange text that the Apostle Paul said about <laughs> 1 Corinthians 7. People who marry <laughs> will face many troubles in this life, and I want to spare you that. So you're telling us up front, this is one of the deals. So your mo woman's keep... groaning because the commode is blurping. <laughs> We're in this. Go for marriage, Jay. See what, what happened. By the way, Dad, um, that was Dad's quote at Sadie's wedding, just so you know. Yeah, well, at the wedding. <laughs> well, I got their attention. I've always <laughs> said when people say, oh, I got to go do some honeydews, I didn't know what that meant. And I was like. Because you're thinking melon, maybe? What is that? Honeydew. Honeydew melon? Uh, that honeydew melon. I ate one of those for the first time the other day. Is that's that one not of the fantastic? greatest things I've ever eaten. Honeydew we were, It was 102 degrees. We were metal detecting. Oh, you old, pulled a field and just ate it out in the field? Well, old Bob. Uh, <laughs> Bob is an interesting fella. He came he, up with a watermelon. He, no, a honeydew. We, well, that's a melon. Yeah. Well, I know, but I'd never eaten one. Oh, wow. And I said, amazing. Bob? Because usually he, he only eats uh, a can of spinach and with a can of tuna fish. And so he always offers it to me. He eats the same thing every time. You you meant spinach he, and he, tuna fish? He takes a can and tuna of, fish. And, and he eats that every time when we're out there. And How he's, old is he? Ah, uh, 65 maybe. Hmm. And uh, he always says, here. And I'm like, I don't do canned <laughs> spinach or canned. When I eat fish, I go catch one. I don't let somebody else put that in a can and say, ooh, tuna fish. Did so you get that? Speaking of, I just thought of it. Some fan sent a, or some listener sent a, uh, their favorite sardines. I forwarded that to you. Did you get that? Not not to uh, that I recall. Oh, man. But I'll, send I'll, it to I'll, me again because I need They were yeah. good, but. But I got to stay with the king. Oh, is, oh you ate them? I, I, I tried them. I, oh, okay. I, I, you liked the they king? They were good, right? but uh, but I I think King Oscar's got okay. the edge. Well, I must have sent it to Dan then. And yeah. we're not. These were skinless. <laughs> they take this. They they skint the fish, skint the sardines. Oh, that's right. And gutted them because we were talking. See, about that's the, everything, Missy. She won't try it because she's I like, like the skin it has and the, the guts. skin and the guts. Well, this this company, whoever it was, skins them and guts them. Yeah, that's I kind of like the idea. I'll try. Yeah, they were good. I'm not send going it to me again so I can pour it. Phil said he makes the greatest, you know, coffee in the world, and it, you know, makes me gag. <laughs> so <laughs> that's why, I, if it weren't for the veterans in an actual pretty good coffee, you know, it'd be rough around here. So anyway, so I go in there. I, you know, I thought let's start with the hole of the drain. There's two screws. Took them out. You know, I got a light. I thought, hmm. I could tell there was something in there. I was. Let me stop you there. So I'm amazed because you're beyond my me. So you you concluded. I mean, I would have not even made the link that that the bubbling gurgling commode was linked to your, your well, drain but and, the water was backing up. Okay, in so the you shower. did have water backing. Up. That's okay. always but, a bad sign. Yeah. Well, of course. Wait, we're standing in ankle deep thought, water. You know, let me just take a look. See here. Well, I look and I thought, okay, I. I actually thought it was like a varmint. 
when I looked down in there, I thought, hmm. We have well, a we. This is something with fur. Clogged hair used to. It could be a sign of. I you, thought I told y'all you got this a big wharf rat. Have, warf have rat. I have I not told you this story? Well, you know, Jay's the redneck. When you assume that an animal is in your shower drain, I don't know that that would be most people's first. You know, there may be usually there was a possum. <laughs> there was a possum in my garage. Well, heard, you did tell us that story. Okay. Well, anyway, so here's what I did. The do. unclogging of drains never. I, tends to get my way. I don't know. People. I'm not a plumber. <laughs> Your best friend's a plumber, though, right? He is, but I didn't. I should have called him, yeah. I guess, now that I think about it. But I didn't. And so I went out and looked at my shop. You know, every man has a shop. Yeah. Well, my shop's full, filled with ammo, fishing supplies. <laughs> decoys. And decoy. I don't have any tools. I've got a toolbox that I've had for 30 years that yeah. doesn't have any tools that in it. That sounds like me. It's got three things left in it. So I looked out there with all my things that I could use, and I thought, I think I got it. I have an idea. So I took an arrow, and I opened up a package of brand-new broadheads, and I put a broadhead on it. <laughs> and you're like, what are you doing? <laughs> so what I did was I took the arrow, <laughs> and I started going down the hole with the broadhead until I found resistance. And I thought, thought to myself this sounds like plumbing I hope 101 this is here. not the pipe that i'm fixing to go <laughs> yeah, through this is a... but i just pushed and it went down and i thought okay i think we're home and so i started twisting good move and, look, and so then i just started pulling and you've and got something on the end oh, of the line it, it, so you're are you, you're fishing now you're basically fishing I guess. Down, yeah pressure started to mount and i thought <laughs> i have the beast <laughs> I have. The, I you was, have a homemade, Jake, a homemade rotor rooter. Rooter yeah. rooter. Out so, of a broad tip arrow. There you go. Mm. So I see the fur. Good thinking so far. I see the fur coming up, and I'm like, I got You're it. You're still thinking it's an animal or something. I did. Okay. I thought it was a rat. And, uh, well, it went, once I got to the opening of the hole, I mean, it just suction created in that, and it just, I mean, it came out, <laughs> and I went, oh, my. It was the size of a football. I would say, <laughs> just kind of shaped like a football, like yeah. a fur ball. Yeah. And I looked and I was like, you know what? That's just hair, <laughs> which I have a lot of hair. <laughs> and evidently I'm losing some of it because it's going down the drain. Yep. And know? Missy too, probably. Yeah. And so I'm like, I fixed the plumbing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and of course, that's, then I'm like, that's want... the greatest ad that Keeps could ever have. <laughs> so you wonder where your hair went? Check the drain. One of, yeah. our, one of our sponsors, Keeps. So, uh, right. yeah, it actually will help with your plumbing bill. So I said, fix the plumbing. And uh, I said, look, I want to show you this. And she's like, I, I don't want to see whatever is in that bag. I was like, it's hair. She's like, that is so gross. She started, started talking about how gross it was. I could tell she was getting nauseous. I was like, <laughs> Well, it wasn't gross when it was on your head. <laughs> this is not gross. Back it, to the text. People who marry will face many troubles in this life. Now we're arguing over a hairball and a bag. Yeah. Jace, this subdivision of living, son, is, is getting out of hand up where you are. I'm telling you. So here's what's funny. So I go, you know, next time I take a shower. Nope. Still back. Oh, no. You didn't, didn't get it all. It, well, I thought I didn't get it all, but... You know, so we did. Talk. You check the flat, the the shower drain. That was where I got it from. The shower drain. Yeah. And right. so, so then I said, "Well, call the plumber because I, I, I either need a ten foot arrow. <laughs> <laughs> this may be flexible. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I went to you know as far as I could go down. Jace, with- they have what they call <laughs> a trap that traps that down in there. That's why it's got that." Sharp curve in it. Well, mine it, don't have a trap. My house was built 1950, and that was before traps, I guess. Uh, maybe so, under your house, but there's one there. Oh, there's one. So there. the plumber come, you know. So I was watching them. Well, they're you know got these cables. Oh, they got big old. And, they're roto rooted. Uh, oh, you mean they cleaned it out? They're though. going ten minutes. Well, I'm I'm getting to the end of the story. <laughs> so they go ten minutes. They're like, no, it wasn't a hairball because I told them my little story. It was like, good job, but should have called us. <laughs> And so they cleaned it out because they want that money. Oh, yeah. So they cleaned it all out. And they're like, you know, take a shower. Everybody's happy. Three days later, which is last night. Three days later. I'm, I'm in there in the shower. I turned it on, you know, to get, get it going. And I hear that commode. Oh, bloop, 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 boy. Bloop. I'm like, what the heck now? I've gone the arrow. <laughs> I paid the plumber. 
And now we're right back to where we we're started. still bubbling. So I, I I don't know. Well, that means you got a major problem. On down the way. Yep. Of course, we had one in ours was one time doing something similar. Chase, you need to get some kind of cash going. Throw off one of them stocks you're into. You know, get you a little spare cash for these plumbers. <laughs> You're gonna have a fleet of plumbers. Plumbing is a great just, business because you all people always oh, need them. Oh, you some gotta point. have them. Gotta have them. I love. I plumbers. just told you that's that, essential workers. Look, that's what right. my only point for that story is: once you go down the road of being Mister Fix It, you're never. It's a legalistic operate. You're never gonna win. <laughs> that you will never achieve. And you can happiness. never get get back it, out. You're you can't there. get out. That's you right. can't plead. The, their That's pleasure right. will never happen That's as right. a result because things keep breaking. Right. It's called life. And it, then it's not going to look and, great. And I've noticed something about people that really are good handymen that can do stuff. They don't like doing it either because they do it for a living. Yeah. So their wives are on their case the whole time. They're like, eh, you know, the last thing I want to do is get home is go work on this crap. So it's you're right. It's a, So what I've done is I've completely punted. I'm just like, I'm an idiot. I, I don't know anything. Don't even confuse me with that. Even when they come to work, they say, "Well, Mr. Rose, I said, oh, just don't even tell me. Just fix it." You know, I mean, I just, I'm just writing a check. That's just what to I mean. enlighten what you're doing a little bit. For the last six weeks, every day, I go down there, and I have the pro- the problem identified. The whole thing, beavers packing <laughs> pipes. <laughs> With mud, I knew we were going to wind up here. You've got the same thing on a smaller scale. That's right. But mm. every day of I've been down there this morning. You pull mm. up, and they've packed it full. Yeah. You get it all going again. It flows all day. You can only let it flow in the day because beavers don't work in the daytime. Well, why don't you just make what I'm saying? You need to make a pole I've that has one. the equivalent of like three. Blades. I have multiple, but what I do is I I leave where the limbs come out. The first limbs come out of a sapling, well, I was twenty feet long. Metal steep. Look, the end of my poles they've got to look like this, and I'm grabbing mud and sticks when I and I'm rotor rooting. But I got a hold of one the other day. I went up in there twenty foot with a track hole, with a rope tied on that pole, bringing forward like a rotor rooter. I went 20 feet up in there, pulled it back out, gouged it again, pulled it back out. This is a 30-inch pipe, not a little two-inch drain pipe like your deal. I got a 30-inch pipe with mud and debris. I've got them all unstopped, but my neighbors, who's draining through me. So we had to cut the levee to drain the water instead of rod the— we never did get it. By the way, Jay's dad told me this the other day. He's probably hadn't told you that our neighbor— Whenever they couldn't get it done, he was like, we tried some of what Dad's telling He said, it won't work. And so you know what they boiled down to? Dynamite. <laughs> I tried to tell you. That's that was when, the word That's when I used. said, y'all get it all. Because I just looked at all Jason, of them. And Jason I said, was right the whole time. There was a time in your life where you liked it. They dynamite. broke out the dynamite, and I disappeared. <laughs> Rednecks Is and dynamite, it? bad combo. <laughs> uh, all right, let's take a break. But you finally got it. Hey. So I, I love, uh, I say it a lot, a lot on the podcast, dad's description of the internet as computer land. In your mind, it's like this far away. In the cloud. In the cloud. It's, it's a land I've never traveled. <laughs> well, you know, you know, now they call it the cloud, dad. Well, so. there's a cloud, but it's not a cloud. When you think cloud, you look up in the sky. Yeah. You can <laughs> find the cloud in the virtual realm of internet reality in computer land as you find the cloud and you find the crowd (laughs) there you go (laughs) look at that that's a marketing genius yeah find the cloud find the crowd well one of our uh, sponsors is uh net suite america basically what they do is is they have part of that cloud business system dad that's what they do uh they're in the cloud and a bunch of companies are basically there with them. And so uh, great place, great way to be able to help your business, especially uh, to check these guys out. So if you uh, if you reach out to these guys at netsuite.com slash Phil, that's netsuite, S-U-I-T-E, um, you're going to get a free guide, seven actions businesses need to take now. You get a free product tour of all their stuff. So check them out, netsuite.com slash Phil, 
Where the cloud is, the crowd is. Good luck to you. <laughs> Jace's hairball. Man, that's interesting. Uh, we all ready to get back to the book of John? Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting on it. Well, we got uh, – last time <clears throat> we had some really uh, good stuff to talk about. We kind of just dove into the first five verses of the book of John. <laughs> And just to reset it in case that you're new and you, had, you didn't hadn't heard it yet, there's a man that Jesus and his disciples run up on, and he's been blind since birth. And so the disciples pose the question, who sinned that he is like this, him or his parents? Basically saying somebody messed up or he wouldn't have been born this way. And and we started the conversation that that's kind of the old age old thing. Why does why do bad things happen to good people? It must be bad mm-hmm. people. Just and just mindset. in life. I mean, even like, you know, things just things just happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it there, there's no That's a good point that sometimes there's just circumstance and happenstance as well as, you know, a, you know, a lot of reasons why things happen. Well, I mean, just like the plumbing story. I mean, you it was nobody's fault, but it it you know, bad plumbing can cause your your whole life to crumble. <laughs> I mean, this must be fixed. It's like the coronavirus, sons and daughters of God. You say there's a possibility they may come down with disease. And you say, well, God's, God says he uses them to punish the wicked. He threatened to use them. If you don't do right, I'll put pandemics. What what uh, he did to Pharaoh, one plague after the other, you know. So people get to thinking, well, how can, how, you know, maybe I'll escape it. But, but that's another reason to be a child of the resurrection. That's right. Because you never know. That's, that's well, exactly you can't right. spend your whole life trying to figure out why. That's right. That's about right. anything. That's right. I mean, in, in our case. Some of our brothers have had coronavirus. They call, you know, some of them ask questions about it. Man, I'm, man, am I being punished here? I mean, is that what you're saying? I said, look, I'm not saying that. I said, just be prepared for physical for death anything. at any time. <clears throat> well, in Jesus, the true power is that no matter what happens, you're going to be able to trump whatever happens by God's power, ultimately through the resurrection, but right. also just in your attitude. And, you know, what's inspiring about life is when you see people who have reasons to quit and they don't. Yep. Well, then all of a sudden we have inspiration. Yeah. You, you know, the uh, Apostle Paul listed all kinds of sufferings Including jail, beatings, you know, oh, yes. everything. And you, uh, un, he had a list this long. He uh-huh. was telling the Corinthians what had happened to him. He said, but we carry on. That's Just right. keep moving forward. Yeah, you th- you you're right. You think about that. If anybody, I, even if I lived through three or four things on Paul's list, Woo. I think it was pretty rough, rough go of it, right? You know, how yeah. many times he say 40 lashes minus, minus one? Minus one, the 39 yeah. well, I've said this before. I'm friends with a kid. Well, he's not a kid anymore. He's 20 years old, but. You know, the average lifespan for someone with the condition he had was like seven. And he he just refused to believe that. And he's, you know, he's a believer. And so every time the doctors, of course, they look at him as like, well, he's the longest living person with this disease. It's about this long, the word. Right. But he refuses to, to get into the stats or acknowledge that whatsoever because he's like, I'm a son of God. You know, I'm not worried about whatever number, what stat, but it's all in how you respond to that. Right. I and mean, he's still here. He's still here. There you go. He's the average eight, or I think the longest living was seven, and he's twenty. Yeah. So he's pretty much turned that upside down, which he believes God healed him. And even though he's he's sick and he has bad days, in his mind. He just chose to say this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life rather than look at the stats and say, yeah, I'm going to die at seven. And, you know, now the world would just say, well, that kid's just got a strong will or he's a survivor because that's what the doctors are saying. Well, I've never seen such the will to live as as this young man. It's unusual, but, he, of course, he gives the credit to God, you know. We've got a and, pastor friend of ours, <clears throat> a former pastor now, he's doing some other stuff, but and he's got a little girl. I think she's about 12 now, and she's been down. We've all met her, and her name is Riley. And she was born with this terrible thing, and, and they couldn't even diagnose her. And so she couldn't speak. She had a trach, and she had all these, you know, issues with her back, and she can't walk, so she's in a wheelchair. 
And so when I first met him, you know, but she was the sweetest little girl. She's got the little glasses on. And, and by now, by the time I met her, she had started talking. She didn't start talking until she was seven years old. And um, so, you know, he, a lot of people ask him about it. He gets those same questions because this girl. Turns out she's 12 now. They just diagnosed her a year or two ago, but she's the only person on the planet that ha- they've made up a new one. She's the only one that has it, whatever it is. And again, it's this long thing. She was born with these maladies, but it's like nothing else. You know, they, they looked at all the other things that have caused this in children, couldn't find it. And so that's what Josh and her dad and I were talking about. It was like, but we all see the work of God displayed in her life. I mean, now she's like praise and worship. You know, her hands are up there. Mm-hmm. They, they go to where Giglio is in Atlanta. And, you know, just watching her. This is, you know, a girl that could be bitter and all that, but she's sweet. She loves the Lord. She's praising God. And I was like, when every time I see her, she inspires me, mm-hmm. you know, because they understood this concept. Of course, we didn't talk about this last time, but maybe part of this whole thought about you know, someone's sin is therefore causing this cause and effect of what's bad in their lives. You know, sin did cause the original sin in the garden brought death. I mean, because God said, if, if this happens, you're going to die. Well, then and, there's a big debate on whether that was spiritual death right, or physical but death. But it actually brought both. <clears throat> it brought both because they. he said you're no longer, which I think we differ on how we feel about this, but they were separated from God because he kicked them out of the garden. But they were also separated from that tree, tree of, of life, <clears throat> which I don't believe the Bible you know, puts things in there by accident because he says you will no longer be able to stretch out your hand and eat from the tree of life. Correct. So it actually brought brought both. Now, Which I've always thought, and this is just a theory, that whatever properties that the Almighty put into that fruit were, had such an impact that they were going to live as long as they didn't see it. This is the ultimate antibiotic. Boy, you talk about... <laughs> well, it doesn't bother me that you can eat something and he can keep you alive. You know, which forever. is why I think for generations, the first few generations, they were all but, living to be a thousand years old. But all I, mean, people, I think it was from whatever that fruit was. Well, you know, I mean, maybe, but everybody debates this, but you got to remember, and I've seen you know theologians get up and argue about why this can't be. Okay, this thing started with making man from dust. Well, let's debate that. Or a woman from a rib. Well, right. I think How are you going to pull that off? from the first human beings, Adam and Eve, this is my thinking on it, uh, this is no mutations, no. This right. this gene pool is, is pure. Yep. Well, I think that's why you say, yeah, you're middle-aged when you get to be 500 or 450 years. <laughs> yeah. You're just now. You well, boys I remember are, my middle-aged years, yeah. four to six hundred. These guys, when they got into about 400 and something, they said, boy, you, you, old time is catching up with you. But they're living eight, nine hundred years. You're like, whoa. Well, I wonder if they're populating the if earth. You're Give 40? that six or seven thousand years. I'm a young earth man. Y'all may not be, but I am. And you say, give that all these mutated mutations that happen. You say there it's growing. We we just and now we're down to seventy if you're lucky yeah. and well, eighty you if you have the like strength. Think it's like a dog, though. I mean, like a do- in dog years. Do you think they? F- like when they were 400, were they like 40? Are you just adding the zero, or did they just get old and just stay there till 900? Oh, I, you know, that's a good All question. I know is if you live to 900 at 450, you're about halfway, which is, I just looked at the math and said, well, that's about well, middle my, age. My theory is always. Well, wouldn't you forget how old you were? You know, it'd be, Maybe. A, it'd I mean, be a cool can... thing to get to be 450 and you just now reached middle age. Right. But you I would have no thing, idea, it, Phil, because you don't know, know one how thing, old if you are one thing, re- if you wanted to populate the earth, you would have done that. Right. A lot of kids. But, Jay's, you may be right because Abraham lived to be, I think it was 150. Mm-hmm. And when he was, you know, it just starts down all of a sudden. Well, when he was in his nineties and about to be a hundred, he said, "My body's as good as dead in terms of reproducing." Mm-hmm. So he made it sound like it wasn't like middle age for him. I mean, you think? Wow, well, I know. So, so it seemed like he was already old, and he can just you lived. imagine? Because I mean, you see somebody's hundred years old. I mean, they're old. <laughs> Nine hundred. I mean, this guy. <laughs> It's just a skeleton. <laughs> He's got to be weathered. I mean, you know, can you imagine the skin on a 900 year old man? A tough old coot. All I know is by the time you get to be 900, 
I don't know when the sexual activity stopped, but it would be a lot faster to get the population of Earth. You know, the according to the United Nations, I studied their little deal, timeline, the, the curve, the, the, it, just, it was a flat line for 5,000 years, 6,000, well, people 7, went crazy years. when, you know, like Viagra was... Was yeah. invented because right. now all words, of the a sudden the old people the population yeah. didn't start up till about the industrial revolution, and that's when it started going off, took off like a rocket. And they looked up, and it was seven point two billion of us. A, a thousand years before then, it was about two hundred fifty million worldwide, according to the United Nations. Right. They studied it. You say, boy, this thing took off like a rocket about three hundred years ago. But but it was low 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 yeah. up until then. Well, can you imagine what was this. in that tree of life? Oh man, I Ooh. mean there had to be a property. Let's let's take a break. So one of my favorite uh, one of my favorite sponsors is uh, Tommy John because they make the best, most breathable underwear in the world. You know, and, I, and I've tried a lot of different ones. I always thought you're somewhat of a sissy if you're talking about your underwear. <laughs> a man now. A man well, discussing underwear. I'm like, no. Nah. Well, Phil, well, they're selling. How are you going to sell it? You got to do well, That's what market. I'm saying. I'm all in on uh, <laughs> yeah. Mr. John, whoever you I'm all in on it. Tommy John. I'm, I mean, I, actually, I tell it, you it what, does I will, not take away your manhood, but to me, it's a little bit soft. I will raise my hand. I am a sissy when it comes to underwear I've because. we never had a discussion about underwear. Me we never either. have. That's, it's a, ever. It's the first one we've ever had is on this podcast. And so basically, they call it cool cotton. It's And it's so great in the summer because that's when it's just. Brutal. Cotton is the best material. For, and this like, is like I have a, a cotton really t-shirt soft on cotton. because in the hot summertime mm-hmm. in Louisiana, this this keeps you cooler than any of it. Yeah, white well, t-shirt, cotton. It's, it's good. Cotton is the best. Right. And, and it used to be white. No, it's yeah, well, yeah. It's got a few stains. Many here, colors. You know. So here's what you do: go to TommyJohn.com/fill to get twenty percent off your first order. And look, this is only for a limited time, so don't wait around. That's TommyJohn.com/fill for twenty percent off. TommyJohn.com slash Bill. No, and that's my point. My point is, is that physical death did begin there because that's what God said, but there was spiritual death. I mean, it was both. It is, I mean, to me, it's pretty clear. And maybe that's where this idea came from then because, well, that was cause and effect. You know, you sin, you die, which is true. Yeah. And that's why the restoration, which is the rest of the Bible, is that you're reconnecting with God first to reconnect spiritually, but then also to say we can live forever. The follow up well, on right. this on this guy who was born blind, just the follow up text, Al, it's it's almost funny. Well, it is. It is it's about as the, the reason I told you about uh being Mr. Fix It, because I'm not. <laughs> But if you don't have any, you know, skills, you just have to have common sense. But in this case, if you were just not a believer and you thought, well, here's a guy that's born blind. Here comes Jesus. The way he chose to (laughs) fix this. Okay, number one, it's offensive. (laughs) (laughs) Because the only thing that would guarantee a fight or a butt whooping when I was a kid is if I spit. On one of my brothers, I, I don't know if you remember, that was a don't do. Once yeah, that yeah. happens, there will be bloodshed. <laughs> <laughs> if you spit on me, Spitting you know, bad. Willie's yeah, going. Even Willie. Well, that's such an offensive thing. But in this case, he makes a little mud out of his. How does that well, read out? In verse 6, he says he uh, he spit on the ground. This is this man born blind. He spit on the ground. So he just imagine a big spit to, enough to make some mud. Which back to a Josie Wells reference, they yep. they they made a B story, which is what you say in Hollywood, over spitting. <laughs> because you thought, most people look, they spit in the yeah. South. You would have thought it would have been more of a uh, physician type move, but in this case, this is the direct opposite it's instead a, of saying well he was sort of like positional about it he said yeah it looks like you've had some problems there <laughs> yeah, and, let me make a mud pie you know this is a mud pie is what he's making. i mean this is a this is a tough issue because but people you know, in the north you, this is a cultural you, uh what would you call it controversy 
Because people in the north don't spit. Well, yeah, they they almost be well. It's rude, offensive, rude in one way. Like so, I was in New York City. You know, I spit on the ground, which there's very little of it there. Mm-hmm. And people would look at you like, I mean, without even like a dip of snuff, just spit on the ground. I don't know what I had something in my mouth that I thought I need to spit this out. But you're and talking. They're like, how dare you spit on the ground? This is this is offensive. Look through all through him, all things were created. John chapter one. We covered this a few months ago. You're like, so here he is. But if he made human beings out from the dust of the earth, well, we have one that he made. All things were made through him. And you say, so he's the one that created humanity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And now spitting on the ground, if he brought you from dust to begin with. Right. Uh, spitting on the ground would be kind of like, well, you gather that up. You say, I, I he's basically saying, listen, well, there's nothing that I can't do. I guess divine, <laughs> divine spit. But so it's interesting because you're right. It's, I wonder what their cultural moray was for this situation about the spitting. Because, you know, I, I was just reading this week, Jace, that they, there's all the new rules for Major League Baseball, coronavirus style, it's about starting two weeks. One is no spitting. No spitting. No spitting well, in Major League Baseball. They're trying to get at that no tobacco chewing. Yeah, problem. there goes anyway. there goes the Copenhagen. But think about yeah. when you watch a baseball game, how often do you see a well, baseball player spit? Whether it's he's just spit. There's some of them that just they're every standing there thirty at the plate. seconds. Just, well, some of them are like professional sunflower. That's right. Uh, combiners. You know, yeah, they they put it in their mouth. They're, they're just to, there's to, holes, the holes coming are, out of the corner of their mouth, right. and I'm yeah. like. I'm like the dude is a professional. So they were interviewing some guy when I was reading this. One of the players, and he's because they were saying, "What about the new restrictions?" And they were listing all this stuff. And he said, "Well, to be honest, the only thing I'm worried about is the spitting." Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's like, "I've you, spent my whole life from when I was a," and I'm looking out there at my six year old grandson playing baseball last night. Guess what he's doing? Spitting about every thirty seconds. Oh, yeah. I said, "Well, he's a ball player. I mean, that's yeah. how I know." But he chose something gross, and then he said, "Go wash yourself," which I think. A lot of people, if you know, if you're going to spit on the ground, if this is what it's going to take. So he put it on his eyes. He made a little mud pie. Of course, he put, can't see what he's yeah, doing, probably. But right. everybody else is thinking, this is gross. <laughs> but it so, wasn't over then because he had to go. He said, go wash in the pool of Siloam. Well, because he's got you, another man spit, <laughs> which has turned into mud on his eyes. Well, you need a shower. Well, and here's the thing. There was a lot of, you know, the Jews were, had a lot of ceremonial issues about a lot of stuff. And so that's part of these. They had to, they would have to go wash a lot of times in a pool if they had a disease or whatever. And then they would have to go quarantine for a while. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of stories in there about this. So maybe it had something to do with that. The man went, he washed. And he came home seeing, so it worked. Now, but but now, how do you tell the story? <laughs> well, right, it's like untellable. But look, I want to. Before, You're like, I was blind. I was born blind. Put dirt in your eyes. You and get up. to fix you right up. You go down to the local higher power. <laughs> you know, we're moving on, and you say, "Well, I was blind for forty years." <laughs> And a guy, I met a guy. <laughs> and, who and they spit, tell me. He spit on the ground. Because <laughs> he didn't see it, so he's, they had to tell him. Somebody told him what And he, then he told me to go wash, and they're like, oh, so now you're high on cocaine. <laughs> I mean, seriously. No one would believe this. And you read it in the Bible, and you say, no, this is, what, what are we doing So here? before we get to the reaction, because it is, almost comical for, for a little ways here in, in John 9. I want to read you this from Mark 8. Here's another story, another situation. This is verse 22. It's in the Bethsaida, which we've talked about Bethsaida before. Some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. Because remember, Jesus has multiple. He Sometimes he touches. Somebody, some One woman touched him yeah. and got healed. So there's all these different ways. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. So imagine this scenario. And sometimes when someone told him about an ailment. Oh, then he just spoke it. He just did it. Remember the, yeah, we talked Before about Before he got there. The rich man's son. So when he had, here's what he did with this guy. He didn't make mud. He just spit on the man's eyes. Where's this at? This is Mark 8. Yeah. That's he one that said, said, I, I, I oh, yeah. can see, but it looked like trees. So, that's kind of, so he spit on the man's eyes and he put his hands on him. And Jesus said, do you see anything? 
So we talk about gross. Forget it. The mud was bad, but he. What about somebody which, just spit? which got me a butt whooping as a kid? <laughs> That's right. He said, and then Jesus says, "Do you see anything?" He looked up, and he said, "I see people, but they look like trees walking around." You know, so he so he's blurred vision from the spit. Once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then they were opened. His sight was restored. He saw everything clearly, and he said, "Don't go into the village." Now, you talk about a bizarro, that's another bizarro healing. Now, the, the reason why, by the way, I'll just give you the short By the version. way, out of all the ways you, you could have. You know the reason I know why? the reason why. Out of all the oh. ways you could have presented this story to the human race, because atheists right now are saying, these idiots, they <laughs> actually right. believe that. That's exactly right. What do you do, Jace? When the, I do believe it. I do, too. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's so crazy off the wall it's so off the wall that i'm like yep makes sense to me i i think a lot of it too is what would you what would you do to allow you know if you want to be free from something what what would you dare to to try i mean a lot of people well, i'll try anything and then you tell them what to do and they're like i ain't doing that right i mean that's redneck Culture 101. You tell yep. somebody how to how to fix something. I mean, even I hate to use myself for example, but go back to that stupid dishwasher. But I'm like, this will work right here. Right. Missy's like, nope. Mm-mm. I don't like the way that looks. I don't like the way it feels. It seems weird. It well, this is way worse than that, and this is real life. So oh, I mean, yeah. this is. So let's take another break. So one of our new sponsors is uh, a group called scoremaster.com. And I didn't know much about this until I did a little research into it, Jace. But these guys are basically help you uh, lower your credit. Let's see. Let me get, do that again. So what these guys do is they help you raise your credit score. Yeah. So it so you have a higher number. Apparently, when you're trying to you know buy a boat, buy a house, do you know buy your ATV, you have to go and get a loan, and it's hard to get a loan if your credit number is lower, which means you may have yeah, had some Yeah, they problems. just look down and see your credit number and say, heck no. Or we're going to have about 6 or 8% more interest on us. Oh, That's right. kind of the way it works. So it's really hard for people that are just starting and all that and struggling because, you know, the score is low. So these guys have a way. It's a great system uh, to help raise that up. I mean, they talk about some that have raised 61 points in less than 20 days. So obviously it can help you and help you quickly uh, if you need these guys. So we want you to check them out, uh, scoremaster.com slash Phil. That's scoremaster.com slash Phil. Get your credit score. So my theory is that Jesus didn't have a power outage. It wasn't like it was a short circuit healing. Well, that's like, not a theory. That's true. And that's true. Okay. So, so he, there had to be an emotive, like you said before, Jez. He doesn't do things just by accident. So he gives he gives a little lesson to his disciples, just like we're about to get to at the end of John nine, where he talks about they're seeing but they're not seeing. You know, haven't Which you? Which is the same thing we're talking exactly. about. Exactly. So, and my, by the way, they're arguing about. Whether it was really him or not. Well, right. Some of them said, no, I don't think that was him. I mean, it Oh, so, your, looks point, like him, so. your point is the reason it – that's why you said blurry. Right. Because they're – from their view, they're kind of getting it, but not really. Exactly. I think he did it as a point to his disciples. It's like – because he, he rebukes them that's, later, a couple of chapters later in Mark, that they're not seeing. He's well, like, why, couldn't he, why couldn't it be representative of the Pharisees? Were there any Pharisees around in Mark 8? Not at not at the healing, no. Oh, but okay. I'm saying he, he he and we're gonna get there in John nine. I think he was doing it to try to teach a lesson to the disciples. It's like it's almost like I got to touch you a second time before you're seeing. Well, it what's could going be on. like a that's prerequisite. My no, no, I think that's better than a theory. I think that's what he was doing. But when did that occur? Yeah. Maybe at the resurrection, because you know Maybe. they all believed right. him. You know, then they were touched again. That's right. At the resurrection. How many times do you read in the Gospels where it says, then they realize what he was talking about after mm-hmm. the resurrection? Then they realize. So that's yeah. what opened their eyes ultimately, which was why the Pharisees I never got that's it. A good, that's, a good, uh, that's a good idea. I think that's why. Well, but, we know he didn't well, like, I know have he, some kind of, uh, you know, like a, a break from heaven 
where like we you know the surge line right. wherever he was getting the power <laughs> you know That's somebody there was tripped a... over the cord in <laughs> heaven an angel you know was fighting with a demon there was a they, kink in the hose you know yeah, or something I, like that well that's what the world so was let me there. ask was you like oh we we've had a power whoopsie i almost short. missed that one <laughs> yeah our guy was sleeping for a second and somebody woke him up i mean that's what they're because you just can't relate so to that, that my next question then before we get i back was to thinking it. with the guy that got the cataract out of my eye but he did say come back in three days after the operation he said i need to check that well came back then he said yeah keep these drops going in your eyes but you were seeing strange things yeah weren't you? yeah oh yeah two weeks later he says go so let's go in and and he put up the the number the letters over there on the wall, and I'm sitting there, you know. So I, I said, yeah, A, A, J, Q, 5, you know, whatever it was. <laughs> and he said, whoops, he said, 2015. I said, you're kidding. He said, you now have 2015 vision, which is better than 2020. I thought 2020 was Because I got the cataract out of your eye. So there was a little bit of him checking, kind of like Jesus was from a doctor's standpoint, you know. He just, he said, you 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 good to go? Well, my, I must need a it cataract. Improves. All I can see is E when I don't have my glasses on. Yeah, E the big. He, the big he one. said uh, he <laughs> said instead of no. doing this, he held up a book in front of me. He said instead of doing this, look, I'm looking right here right now at this book. You say, <laughs> can you read it? I barely can, but it's blurry. What's this? I move it right there. <laughs> I'm saying what. But per, only per, out of clear. the right eye. Well, well, so I closed my look. Well, when I, he fixed it, when he <laughs> when he took the cataract out, I went from I'm 2015. But he said it's still. Well, like can this. you see it now? Now it's blurry. But he said you to pull back a little bit. Well, Phil, I, that, I said you got to be kidding. He you said just no. Took your money because I'm the same way right now, and I hadn't had a cataract surgery. Well, that's why you need a little tuna. <laughs> But you're still blurry. <laughs> they do it. They do a tune up now. <laughs> well, wait a minute. But you're saying you're still blurry now. Yeah, up close. If it's close. Well, I, that's the way I am right now. But whatever he right put here, it's whatever blurry. kind of lens he put in there to replace to get rid of the cataract, whatever they do to to replace oh, that. Oh my goodness. He yeah. said just going to vary it just a little bit now. Instead of here, you're going. Uh, he's well. He said watch. He said what about that? I said he said clear or blurry. I said blurry. And he moved it back about that far. He said, what about now? I said, perfect. He said, that's why I got 2015 vision. Those, those numbers, okay. they all. This guy, I don't believe him. Because <laughs> look, right? I paid him, so I mean. <laughs> all right, look, I just, I know we, the spirit is more this. important. I know this. I can see better now than I could before. <laughs> now, you got con. Look, right here, it's blurry, okay? I haven't, I hadn't been to an eye doctor in my life. And this just started happening. Oh, yeah. All right. When Welcome I move, look, to the fifty-year-old. When I move it back right here, perfect. Yep. I can see perfectly. Yep. Neither this man nor his parents but see. see said, look, when I come up, uh oh, it got blurry. Yep. So look, close the right eye. Not blurry. Oh well, a little, but right there, fine. Same way with me. But well, it's it's your eyes. You might have got that in here. Let me get, one of my eyes is one look, way. But you were saying it was way. because of your surgery. Look, if I do this and I'm looking at the TV. <laughs> You know, I can see. And you're doing this to hear. I can do this, and I said, "He said one eye is far sighted, the other eye is near sighted. That's where you are, my friend." We'll but see. you're saying that happened as a result of your cataract surgery. I'm saying it just happened. Age, age. All right, let's age on the eyes. Let's take our last break. So here, so you're right about the near sighted and far sighted. Because let me blow your mind then. So here for me. Perfect. I mean, I mean, I can read it all. I could read it, but yep. when I go back, I can't see anything. Yep. You go on that wall well, that's right there. a different there. problem. Well, because I'm I, I'm nearsighted. Could I could be see both it. your eyes. I'm seeing up close. I can't see far away. One of mine is is nearsighted. One of them is farsighted. Well, if I had to pick so one, look, he just I would he chose mine. in the middle. Yeah, because I have to have together. glasses to see your. So I didn't get con. That guy knew what he was doing, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Yeah, but this all happened I went from, after the surgery. I went from I, my left eye saying, well, it's just a blur, everything. I went from there oh, to all I could okay. do is move this back a little bit about that far. Well, he just yeah. puts you to where I am. That's right. Okay. All See, right, I, well. if I put my glasses on, 
And I can see now, I can see Connor. Oh, look. I can see good I'm, stuff, but I can't a, see this I'm anymore. Glasses, you have though. 17 pairs of glasses on the table <laughs> right now. Right now. And you just had surgery. <laughs> they get close. <laughs> look at the glasses. <laughs> They're piled up here. Perfect. It looks like to me you have multiple problems. <laughs> <laughs> Better without the glasses. I'll tell you what. Let me go spit on oh, the ground and put it on your eyes. Say, we're back to the spit again. Yeah, you yeah. Go, so finish your story. So, <laughs> They're arguing well, about. <laughs> well, we're not going to finish it all today. But so here's what happens. So the guy goes, he's healed. His neighbors see him, and I'll just summarize the next. No, this person. is the Mark Eight. Uh, no, we're back to John. Okay. Yeah, Mark Eight. That's that was another. Weird but that story. was a crazy story. It's a crazy, story. just as crazy because he. Well, and and the point I was going to ask you guys is it's interesting that Jesus showed he had a myriad of healing ways to do that. I mean, like he, he didn't just stick to one well, thing. Sometimes but, but he could both, speak it, he could, you know. Both stories have one thing in common. He was trying to get yes. them to see that Jesus is the light. That's right. I mean, we take being blind as a powerful, horrible condition, physically blind, <laughs> which I'm sure he does too. But he healed him so he could see not just physically but he was he gets back into this jesus being the light which is what we talked about in john 3 right. and john 1 and, and to, to living your life out loud and proud and confessing and your to sin. the point that you've made consistently through this whole book of john the sign was never the point mm -hmm. he was the point and then you notice he always has a lesson out of the sign in other words, he's trying to, t especially his disciples, he's trying to get them to understand it's not the miracle. He knows what's going to happen when he's gone. They're going to have this power. And then it's, it would be real easy if they didn't understand the narrative here that then they would just be doing it for their own glory, which, by the way, is well, what happened in almost every New Testament. Well, we term. don't want to say, but I'm going to say, <laughs> well, people don't, this makes people uncomfortable, but I'm going to say this. <laughs> Well, you we would, don't want to say, I'm fisting to say. I'm going to say I like it because I that. think it's the point, and, but nobody wants to talk about this, especially people who don't believe in God. But if you let this go in your mind, Jesus would, would the, the point is, you would be better off in Jesus blind physically. That's a great point. Than because, the opposite. Because even without your eye having vision, the, the 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 souls among us, the brothers who are blind, they can still see the light, that's and right. they don't even have eyes. Well, that was his point. I think that's why he picked a blind man. But you got to remember, now we got back to where we started, which is why the bad things happen. There's some situations that you're actually better off in, and we don't want to pray these prayers. You know, like a prayer you don't want to pray. I have prayed them before. <laughs> is do whatever it takes for this to happen for them to see you and, and your son. Well, once I pray that prayer, I'm like, get, whatever it takes, get ready. if it has to be something bad, but I would rather, especially when it comes to my kids, my wife, those I love, I'd, I would rather something bad happen and they stay with Jesus. I mean, bad in a physical way we, than the opposite. We have one of our, uh, our mentors who's, who's passed away and his wife too that they lost a son, um, he was in his 20s, at, in a car wreck, bad car wreck. He and his wife died. Their daughter survived, and uh, which I just met with her and her husband a few weeks ago working on some issues. But his mom, the, the mom, the grandmother, Barbara, she prayed that prayer she, she for all her children. She said, God, I, I want them to be in heaven forever. And so whatever that means, if, you know, that's what I want. Well, they died at a terrible car wreck in their twenties. And, but when I watched them through that process, all of us did their faith never wavered. Cause she said, no, well, I already told the almighty, whatever it takes for them to be in mm -hmm. heaven. And so in her mindset, so other people look at that and say, well, that's crazy. I mean, you know, why, why, you know, this yeah, shit, the world you, has a really problem with it. Cause they're like, this is so bizarre. But for us, if you, if you believe the resurrection's real and God's, greater purpose is real so the, just, the first you, you just go with it the first thing carl said who's who we all love this carl his when his son died the first because kellett was there he told me this he looked at, at barbara and they're in shock of course the state troopers there and he looked at her and he said barbie this week he said barbara barbie this is what we live for now that was his first words 
hmm. on hearing that his son and daughter had just been killed. Now, that's a man of faith. We talk about a man that reasons to the resurrection. Mm-hmm. And of course, we know that because we know this man. He lived that his whole life. He sure did. And so that's kind of the point. Of, of, he literally was the most positive, or is, because he didn't go anywhere, really. No, that's right. We, he is I the still most quote him in almost every sermon. Positive person. Every I've day, ever at some point, he would say, I always remember, guys. The best days are yet, yet to come. To come. Yeah. <laughs> Go for it. You know? I told Phyllis that. <laughs> That's right. My favorite thing he did though was that when he would, he would, he would uh, almost sing a song, and then I think he realized because he was a terrible singer. <laughs> Remember he'd go, bah! <laughs> he, he would like come out of his office and it was like he forgot where he was. And he's like, oh, there's other people Baby. listening. Bah! <laughs> my, and he would just get quiet. My favorite thing he did is he used to close out a prayer sometimes at church when we met. And he would say, he would give announcements in his prayer. He said, we're going to yeah. pray for this family and the visitations at 2 o'clock at Moorhurst today. I and mean, he would just slip in that little you know announcement in the prayer. Uh, I miss me some Carl. So we're about out of time. Uh, we are days away uh, when this podcast air uh, airs uh, for the release of Jesus Politics, how to win back the soul of America. So I want to remind you guys about that. If you hadn't already got a pre-copy of the book, to be sure and get that. Uh, it'll bless your life. We'll be doing a lot of media about it, so you'll be seeing a lot of stuff in the next few days. But uh, very important in the current climate to talk about uh, who Christ is, kingdom living, and how those things impact it. So I, I expect the book to do well, Dad. I think it's the perfect time for it to come out uh, as well. So I hope so. We're excited about that. So next time we are going to get back to this story uh, in John 9, because, look, there's more. I mean, it's the investigation. the investigation is what comes up next, which just so reminds me of some of these things you see today when these people get after somebody, you know, oh, we're going to get to the bottom of this. That's but you so. got to remember, the man did spit on somebody and claim to have healed him. Mud that, pies. That requires <laughs> a full investigation. <laughs> well, we're going to get one, and the implications are going to be pretty crazy, too. So we'll do that next time on Unashamed. So we're so glad you guys were with us today. You can subscribe on iTunes or Spotify or YouTube or Facebook. And be sure and rate us on iTunes so that other people can know about the podcast.